cream. That's okay. I'll take sugar. You know, you're right. It is nice to take these shoots a little slower. We don't always have to be in a hurry to get to the next shot. Indeed. And what movie are we reviewing today? Why are you randomly looking over there? Have you tried it? Huh, I guess that was kind of fun. Well, we're reviewing The Truman Show. I'm surprised you forgot already. Oh dear. What a rush of emotions. <laughs> Are you okay? I've never seen such an outburst like that. Oh, critic. It's just, my views on the movie are a bit complicated. Complicated? Complexly complicated. Well, how do you mean? I've just always had a strange reaction to the movie that some people find unconventional. <sighs> well, truth be told, I have a thought about this movie that's also kind of unconventional. Yeah. Well, don't tell anyone. Yeah. It's that... I really like this movie, but I don't love it. Got him! <laughs> Thousands watch from the very beginning, waiting for him to reveal his deepest, darkest secret. With a multi-layered strategy, we spent years of preparation, utilizing state-of-the-art technology and the complexities of human psychology. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, Nostalgia Critic doesn't love The Truman Show! You didn't like just randomly looking over there, did you? Welcome to Nostalgia Critic Dislikes The Truman Show. I never said that! We have been waiting to reveal his hatred for this movie for years. I don't hate it! Let us interview the woman who made this all possible, Tamara Chambers. Oh, thank you, Malkov. It's great to be here. Tamara, how did you get this monster to reveal what a swine he is in such a natural performance? Well, I had to ask myself, who is Tamara Chambers? Okay, knock it off. I don't dislike this movie. Critic, I've been following you literally from birth to get this secret out of you. There's not the big an age difference between us. In fact, I'm older than you! It's okay, Critic. Hey, stop it. Knock it off. How am I feeling that? I know you've despised this movie for years. It's all right, Critic. No, no, stop it. What? Well, who does this? What? It's clear The Truman Show has reached perfection as a movie, and if you don't acknowledge that, then there's a problem. <sighs> no, that's the thing. It is perfect, but that's also kind of the problem. See, only a demented mind like that would loathe this movie. Well put, Doctor. No, he's not a doctor. I don't even know he's supposed to be Malcolm. Are you Malcolm? I am, fourth dimensionally. Well put. No, it's not put. None of this is put. It is very put. No, Christ, just, uh, let me explain. Since its premiere in 1998, The Truman Show has been endlessly praised and it truly is well deserved. Partly because it played against type. It was Jim Carrey's first major attempt at drama, it took what many would consider a comedic idea and played into the darker elements. And as many have pointed out, it was ahead of its time. So much of the technology we now have today, so many of its satirical ideas have come to be. And little details in the background and foreground demanding a rewatch are now utilized in many well-respected films. When I first saw it, I loved it, but it wasn't quite what I was expecting. It was clever, satirical, and poignant, with a lot of beautifully surreal imagery. But I slowly realized it did everything an idea like this should do, and then stopped. I did a video about whether or not a movie can be so good it's bad, and while Truman Show is not in any way a bad picture, I never got choked up over the depth or complexity of these characters. But again, that's not to say they're not at all deep or complex. Truman is a very safe character for someone who's had his whole life broadcasted. I mean, imagine every moment of your life was filmed. I mean, every moment. Admit it, there's some dark, twisted, weird-ass shit that would mess you up if you knew the whole world saw it. Despite being risky for its time, I found I wanted it to be riskier, I wanted to take more chances, I wanted to make mistakes or say something that might not have been safe to say. But that's where it's a little too brilliant for its own good. I don't think that's what it's supposed to do. 
Everything is designed literally from birth to make this world and its lead as gentle, kind, and ideal as possible. We wouldn't see more of the messed up stuff because it would be edited out. And who knows, perhaps this fictional utopia would turn out someone as safe as Truman in real life. However, that also doesn't make him the most interesting. But once again, you could argue that's part of the idea. It's a lot to unpack, and I think it's an interesting film to look back on 25 years later. Oh, wow. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, your review changed the way I look at the world. I haven't reviewed it yet. Oh, sorry. Usually when it cuts and you talk for a long time, we're supposed to be blown away. Yeah, like, oh, he thought that about a movie? I guess I'm a changed man. You know, you two are jackasses. Go film someone else without them noticing. We could try that. We already did, remember? Oh, right. They all found out about it and were so happy that they became influencers. You really couldn't make this film today. This is... For this camera only. There's nothing fake about Truman himself. The movie begins with, honestly, kind of a strange choice. I saw a lot of critics say, don't ruin the surprise of the film if you haven't seen the advertising because the reveal in the middle is so good. The reveal, of course, being that Truman's life is a TV show. But they tell you right at the beginning. Nothing you see on this show is fake. It's merely controlled. Now granted, most people going in from the ads and word of mouth know what the movie is about, but I do wonder why they act like this is all a big secret revealed in the middle when they spell it out in the first few minutes. There is no difference between a private life and a public life. My, my life is my life, is the Truman Show. In my opinion, it's better to start skipping the first three minutes, but I don't know, I guess some others didn't put it together, so maybe it's not that big a deal. No, you first, please. <laughs> I'm not that anxious to get there. We see the life of Truman Burbank, played by Jim Carrey, who's basically the Ned Flanders of this world. Good morning. Morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And in case I miss you on the holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Pleasant Kwanzaa, Joyful Life Day. Hey, Pluto. Oh, no, 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 oh, get down. He won't hurt oh. you. Get down. I remember when I first saw this noticing tiny spheres in the environment as if little cameras were hidden in them. And I even remember squinting my eyes to see if I could see a lens reflection. That'd be all for you, Truman. That's the whole kit and caboodle. The whole first half is shown to us just like a regular episode of The Truman Show, occasionally cutting to people watching in real life. Anytime there's a close call, like a light falling, literally named after one of the stars, and I've always been curious if that star was out for the rest of the movie, the world compensates for it. An aircraft in trouble began shedding parts as it flew over Sea Haven just a few moments ago. Also, life is not, repeat, not a TV show. Truman is raised to be the idealized human being that everybody watching wants to be, and his environment, Sea Haven, is made as pleasant as possible with few to no dangers. Inspired by a lot of 50s nostalgia and Norman Rockwell paintings, which I guess in the late 90s we were kind of nostalgic for. Could I have directory assistance for Fiji, please? Like many prisons, though, the greatest danger is wanting to leave, as any time it looks like he's thinking about traveling, the world reminds him how selfish that would be not appreciating the paradise he's in. Fiji Islands. Truman, did you see this? as declared by the Orwellian Institute. The environment punishes him for wanting to leave by sending him on a job that's across the water, which he's deathly afraid of due to losing his father in a storm, which of course was all staged. I uh, have an appointment, dentist. You're gonna lose a lot more than your teeth if you don't meet your quota. I'm sorry, Mr. Dickey, it'll never happen again. I've been a jerk. <laughs> Adding the sinking boat is another nice, Particularly cruel touch. While he might be in heaven, heaven likes to constantly remind you, you can and should never leave. Hi, honey. Laura Linney plays his wife, Meryl, who once again brings her A-game as a woman who's pretending to care about her husband, but not over making the sponsors happy. It's a dicer, grater, peeler, all in one. Never need sharpening, dishwasher safe. That's amazing. <laughs> Here's my ass. In case drama doesn't work, I can remind people I'm funny with my ass. Noah Emmerich plays his friend Marlon, who seems equally focused on sponsorships. That is a beer. Are you sure this shouldn't constantly be shown? And Truman explains, despite Sea Haven being a happy day, Stafford wives Haven of bliss, it's too good, and he wants to travel to Fiji. This is us. <laughs> and all the way around here, Fiji. Okay, and despite me thinking Jim Carrey does do a good job in this movie, I am going to point out the few majestic oscar Bation moments. Peachy. That's just one whisper away from, I don't even know who I am. As the environment gets more desperate to keep him there. God, that's good. He swears he sees his dead father on the street, alive and... wellish. 
I just love the idea that emergency runners are always on standby whenever they need to detain him. His mother tries to convince him it wasn't his father, telling him not to think painfully about his death, while trying to force him to think painfully about his death. You sailing off into that storm, but I've never blamed you, Truman, and I don't blame you now. Would I lie? Truman thinks back, or at least the showrunners want us to think he's thinking back, to his <clears throat> younger days. Can you believe I'm graduating college on my birthday? I'm the happiest 22 going on 36 year old there is. Is my, is He's drawn to a girl named Lauren, played by Natasha Michelone, despite the environment clearly trying to draw his attention to Meryl. <laughs> Truman, look at my dance! It's called the Cockblock Foxtrot! Despite the show's efforts, he does meet up with Lauren, who tries to get him as far away from the cameras as possible. This is my favorite pizza place. Tony! <laughs> One large extra plankton. Don't back sass me! <laughs> he shares his first kiss just as her supposed father stops her from revealing the truth. It's fake! It's all for you! I don't understand! I, and the sky, and the sea, everything! This is group called QAnon? They have all the answers! Yeah, that could be another reason this movie wouldn't fly today. She does end up being taken away, and despite marrying Meryl, he gets pretty obsessed over the years. No, no, Truman. The Ransom though is supposed to be magazine clippings and the woman is supposed to be real. Close, but no cigar. Okay, so I talk about how Truman sometimes seems too well adjusted to feel like a real person. But you could argue this is kind of creepy. The funny thing is, I don't even think it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be romantic, like the guy who never stops trying to win over the woman he loves. And where that trope is fine in comedies and fairy tales and cartoons, but not the best practice in real life. This one also doesn't age that great, but I kind of like that it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't make him a bad person or anything, but if your friend said he did this, would you call it healthy? He's literally Facebook stalking with a face from books. It does give him something a little odd and off-putting, and I like that. What's that line Tony Stark had? I don't trust a guy without a dark side. Maybe this world is so perfect, this is the closest he can come to having a dark side. The fact that this doesn't age well weirdly makes it age better. The following day, Truman starts to become more and more aware of how inhuman his human surroundings are. Okay, he's making his turn onto Lancaster Square. Oh my god, he nearly hit balance. Something's wrong, uh, change frequencies. At first I was a bit thrown off by all the mistakes these people were constantly making, but the more I think about it, it's been 30 years of him never questioning things. The people eventually got more complacent than Truman did and fell behind in an honestly believable way. It's unlikely Truman ever went in this building for the 30 years he's lived there. And this happens to be the one day he decided to randomly. Catching the guy who would usually be security off guard and leading to more smoke and mirrors being revealed. Anything happened? No. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's been even more goof ups in the past, but Truman was just too content to notice them. Showing the environment shaping him, but also him shaping the environment. I also really like the Philip Glass music. Can't count how many times you can say that in your lifetime. <laughs> Particularly because you know the show creator Kristoff is the one choosing it. You could have picked something menacing or uncomfortable to show him discovering his reality is a bad thing, but instead he uses something that reflects more of an awakening. Like some part of Kristoff wants Truman to evolve, despite most of him wanting Truman to stay. What was the furthest you ever got off the island? Went all over. Never found a place like this, though. Once again, his friend calms him down, and we're given what I think may be the creepiest part of the movie. And there's lots of pages left over for baby photos. I would like to hold a grandchild in my arms before I go. <laughs> I think they're pushing him to have a kid so they can keep the show going. Truman can't live forever, so a child taking over the spotlight disturbingly makes too much sense. Maybe his kid will ironically spend time exposing people who are being lied to while being watched by millions. Wait, that kind of happened. The next morning after taking their onslaught of vitamin D because they technically don't get real sunlight. Again, crazy ass details in this. Truman questions his wife about her motivations. What's your rush? Surgery. There was that, that elevator disaster downtown. It was on the news last night. You know how it's hard for someone to do a voice while doing another voice like it's actually pretty difficult to do? I think it's also tricky for a good actress to act bad, but not too bad. It has to be convincing enough, but also show she's starting to lose her nerve. 
Linny does this in spades here. This cable, it just snapped. This elevator, it just plummeted down. That, that building, it's right next door to where you were. Can you imagine? It's not even worth thinking about. All the casting is great, but I don't care what anyone says. She's the best performance in the movie. That's proven even more when Truman notices that people are on a continual loop and he starts to lose his mind. They go around the block. They come back. They go around again. They just go around and around. This is a great callback to Carrie Zanier material, but it's also believable this is this boring man's way of rebelling. What's New Orleans like this time of year? Mardi Gras! <laughs> Once again, though, look at Laura Linney. <laughs> Truman, where are we going? What a reaction, as if to ensure viewers, don't worry, everything's fine, while also signaling the showrunners, Christ, help me! Looks more real than the effects in Dial of Destiny. Meryl perfectly predicts there's a leak at the plant. Looks like a leak at the plant. Leak at the plant. Those small moments make me laugh the hardest. But when the cop accidentally says Truman's name, he tries to escape, resulting in him being detained. I can just imagine the show's director screaming into her earpiece, Calm him down, but get to the ad! A ton of money was put down for it! Let me fix you some of this new Mococo drink. All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua, no artificial sweeteners. Okay, maybe even more than Truman, I want to know what happens to her character after she leaves the show. Because good god, you know she ended up in rehab for something. Ruin! <laughs> Meryl! We get a hilarious scene of her threatening him with one of the product placements. Just as another product placement saves the day. It's unprofessional! <laughs> Man, is it crazy just how the sponsorship inserts itself out of nowhere. Hi, I'm the punchline for this scene. <laughs> after Marlon once more talks Truman down, again after a few Oscar-y faces. And the last thing that I would ever do is lie to you. We were in love, weren't we? His friend reunites him with his lost father. I found him for you, Truman. Sure, he's got quite a story to tell. And if you're thinking, wow, that sounds really forced, and nobody in their right mind would believe that. Again, that might be the point. When I first saw this, I thought he was crying because he was reunited with his father. But because there's no other moments that indicate he figured out what's going on, I think you could argue he's crying because he knows everything, even the people closest to him, are a lie. I mean, his best friend found his dead father. I'd honestly like to think bad Hollywood writing is what tipped him off that the world he's in is fake. Even through this small window showing what Truman's doing while these interviews are going on, it looks less like he found his lost father and more like he's processing what the hell he's gonna do while being aware he's being watched. What a week it's been. I don't know about you, I was on pins and needles the entire time. On that note, this is where it's revealed Again, yeah, okay, I already talked about that. That Truman is the only true man in this world who's not an actor and his entire life is a production. Ed Harris plays... You know, I was gonna say Christoph, but let's just say it. He's playing Ed Harris. We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. One of my favorite character reactions. I never noticed the first time I saw this. I like to think Carrie looked up and said, Well, the man on the moon can act that pretentious. I can act that pretentious in my man on the moon. How do you intend to explain his... 22-year absence. Amnesia. <sighs> Brilliant. I hear it's gonna work great in Spider-Man 3, so we're gonna try it out here. Got Speaking of typecast, this is the third reporter Harry Shear would play that year. <laughs> One of them being a cartoon character and ER being on The Simpsons. I believe Truman is the first child to have been legally adopted by a corporation. That's correct. Bullshit, if that was the case, his legal name would be Pepsi Presents Truman Baja Blast. The Hague for Kristoff. Hello. The Hague. All right, we've lost that call. For the longest time, I didn't know what that hung up call was about. But it turns out The Hague is an international court that deals with crimes against humanity. There's even a tone heard that's made when an international call hangs up. The Hague. Maybe they were gonna do something, but then someone more powerful stopped them? I'm not sure, but you can read a few things and do it. And what you've done to Truman is sick. We remember this voice, don't we? Lauren confronts Kristoff, as it looks like for years she's been pushing hard for Truman's release. The world, the place you live in, is the sick place. Sea Haven is the way the world should be. Fun fact, that was Disney's original welcoming speech for Epcot. Kristoff shows he's the ultimate helicopter parent literally hovering over him and watching him like a father since his birth. Despite there only being a 12-age difference between them. 
Okay, so sure, I like to think Kristoff was a young Orson Welles type prodigy ahead of his time. But 12? That's not a prodigy, that's a tick villain! Meryl will be leaving Truman in an upcoming episode, and a new romantic interest will be introduced. One kind of missed opportunity is I think all this behind the scenes stuff should have been part of the show too. The style of the office or a found footage movie might have worked better because so many other elements that might be interesting aren't shown to us. For example, Meryl leaves off screen. And we also don't see Truman having a conversation with his lost father either. You could say Kristoff edited that out or kept it brief, but because the film shows it isn't bound to what's broadcast to the public, it's a little odd not seeing these. What's he doing in the basement? He moved down there after Meryl packed up and left. I know we can connect the dots to Truman figuring stuff out, but these are two major moments with Meryl leaving and talking to his long lost dad. I think at least one of them should have been shown just to keep us a little closer to his emotional journey. Even if he starts to put together, it's all fake. With that said, Truman does tease that he knows what's going on, but doesn't fully reveal he's figured them out. Trumania of the Burbank Galaxy. This bit of him drawing with soap was actually improvised by Carrie, and the producers liked it so much they actually used it as the teaser. <laughs> that one's for free. All other soap videos are done exclusively through my cameo. I have to learn how to draw smaller, though. While one of the directors, played by Paul Giamatti, looks at the classifieds, perhaps foreshadowing his future disobedience, Kristoff notices Truman has tricked them and seems to have vanished. Cue the sign. Now is Truman! They finally find him as he's gotten over his fear of water, takes the Santa Maria, okay, little on the nose, and at long last sails beyond what he's seen. Kristoff, again like a disapproving parent who doesn't want his child to grow up, tries to stop him with a literal act of God. He's gonna drown, he doesn't even care. Do it! Do it! I know this is science fiction, but how are they getting half those boat shots? It's the sea. What can you cut to? Go to Bertha Cam. It probably goes without saying, but Harris does a great job playing someone not ready to let both his creation, but also what he sees as his son go. Almost killing him until he realizes what he's becoming. I shouldn't have hung up, should you have, Hag? Yeah, it's just how he looked after the ticket sales of Dick and Jane. How many of you are like me and always look for the bottom of the sky backdrop here? It seems so obvious when you start looking for it, but man did it get a big reaction when we first saw it in the theater. I thought I saw Kirk freeing whales out here. Truman literally touches the sky and discovers the truth in probably the most powerful scene, where they replace the sound with just musical score and never go in for a full close-up. We don't even see his face when he finally breaks down. For once, we have to imagine what Jim Carrey's face looks like during a big scene. It was a smart choice and really emphasizes being both justified but also heartbroken at the same time. This is followed by probably the most stunning image of the film with a staircase in the clouds leading to an exit. Though Kristoff tries one last attempt to keep him there. Truman. I can hear you. Who are you? I am the creator. Go back or I will smite thee! Of a television show. Or I guess the truth works too, sure. Then who am I? No, but I'll sure try. It's okay, Truman. I understand. Okay, seriously, this scene is done pretty great, with Kristoff trying to convince him to stay, but deep down knowing this is probably the last time he'll ever see him. I have been watching you your whole life. I watched you on your first day of school. The episode when you lost your first tooth. <laughs> I broke that tooth. I guess I'm sorry for that. Say something. Let me just get my middle finger ready. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And good luck finding good attorneys, cause good god, I'm suing your asses! Oh, and uh, meeting up with a woman I met once in decade my entire life too, but after that, SUING YOUR ASSES! And it ends on probably the most realistic part of the movie. What else is on? Yeah, let's do what else Where's is on. the TV Guide? Especially the part about randomly thinking, where's TV Guide? And that was The Truman Show. It's great. It truly is. Four out of four, clever, smart, ahead of its time, everything is done perfectly. It's just not a movie I obsess over because it's more a study of the human condition rather than a study of a human being. 
Truman is designed to be safe by this overly safe world, so it results in kind of an overly safe movie. But in a strange way, it's a brilliantly safe movie because that's part of its design. This is a film that lets the story and ideas lead the characters rather than the characters lead the story and ideas. The movies I'm passionate about, though, usually throw in surprising character moments, something you didn't expect somebody could do, but still matches who they are. And there's not a ton of that here. In earlier versions of the script, there were much darker elements that showed more of Truman's flaws and how the audience reacted to them. I think I might have enjoyed that a little bit better. Like, the more the show tries to make him look flawless, the more flaws develop. But that's just what I would like to see. The film that came out is perfectly fine. Better than fine. It's kind of astonishing we got what we got at this time period. The studio didn't want this to be treated so dramatically, and movies like this weren't treated that dramatically. Literally, a lame comedy with a similar premise came out soon after called Ed TV. It's my breast, Ed. It's on the internet. Oh, this just keeps getting better, doesn't it? <laughs> Cause she's gay. That's what the Truman Show would probably be if the people who made it didn't fight for their vision. And I'll be honest too, because there is so much that can be done with this idea, I think I'm a little disappointed there hasn't been more done with this idea. The film was so popular and so groundbreaking, nobody wanted to explore it further. And I think you could. How about competing with another show doing the same thing so they have to go darker, do meaner things for Sweeps Week? There's a ton of harsher character building possibilities. And yeah, okay, I'm not saying make a remake or a sequel, I mean, good god, we have enough of those, but... It'd be like someone creating Superman, and for some reason no one ever did another story about a superhero with a cape. It just seems weird such a good idea isn't explored more. But again, that is kind of a good problem to have. When your movie is so good, you want to see more done with it. I don't usually quote other critics, but Roger Ebert had an interesting quote about Apocalypse Now that I think sums up why I really like this film, but don't have an emotional passion for. I doubt if a film can be both great and perfect, since in order to be truly great, a filmmaker has to try things he's not sure about and go places where he doesn't know the way. Yeah, like I said, in a strange way, maybe it's a little too good. Still, The Truman Show stands as a fine movie that has good acting, excellent directing, and ideas that still spark conversations even today. It worked back then, it works even more now, and my guess is it'll work even more in the future. Whether you adore it or just really like it, its legacy is one that'll be watched as often as Truman himself. And it looks like I'm not surrounded by cameras anymore, which is good. Can you imagine where else they might have turned up? I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. There's a camera in here, isn't there? No. In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.